Oh, a message from America to Europe. This might be interesting. Okay, um, as a European gun owner, I just start with a little side note, okay? You see, if I would want to brag with my gunning skills, I would really reset my video taken after I pulled the trigger with the safety engaged, but go ahead. Hello, my name is Justin. I'm an American patriot, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the misconceptions you may have about gun owners here in America. Unfortunately, the media probably hasn't given you a very clear picture of what it's like to be an American gun owner. The first thing I want to talk about that the media has failed to disclose to you is the fact that most of these horrible shootings are occurring in what we call in America gun-free zones. A lot of you in Europe probably don't know this, but in the USA it's perfectly legal to carry a concealed handgun on your person for personal protection. That's a fair point. You see, this is indeed different over here. We are not allowed to do that by default. But there, if there is a need, you get a license to do that. So a lot of taxi drivers carry guns for a good reason. And most of the terrible things that happen right now in Europe are either bombs thrown in crowds, cars plunging through crowds, and guys that start stabbing people in the open. In the first two a gun is pretty useless and in the third it's kind of useless because as you know the guy with the knife wins if he's closer than two meters or so. It's commonplace in 39 out of the 50 states here in this country. And unfortunately many of our politicians haven't learned that it's not the lack of gun control laws that is causing this violence, but it is the gun control laws that is... Con you see, we have a different culture, okay? Your culture in America is younger than the gun and ours is older than the sword. We had weapon bans in Europe in the times of Rome and it worked pretty well. The thing is, a guy with a dagger could not inflict a lot of damage before he was killed by the guards. The potential of a firearm is now a bit in conflict with this very very, very old culture of banning weapons from the cities. But that's the basic. It's a very old culture thing. Controlling that. In states like Utah, Wyoming, New Hampshire, Vermont, where we have very few gun control laws, we actually enjoy quite a bit of peace. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's not the most dense populated areas, isn't it? Now I tell you what, our rural areas have also very liberal gun laws and a lot of guns are around there and in these areas, well, they have little, very little crime rates. Four states that I have named, Wyoming, Vermont, New Hampshire and Utah, are up there with some of the most gun-friendly states, are also up there with some of the most violence-free states. Is that gun owners in this country are typically portrayed in the media as pretentious, angry, and violent. And I blame Hollywood for that. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, you see, guns make a good story. I can understand why they jump over and over on these gun stories. Because they make good stories. We couldn't be any further from the truth. While we gun owners value our freedom and stand strictly by it and will protect it fiercely, we have no propensity towards violence. We have no desire to commit violence. And in fact, most of us would be perfectly intent on living a life without violence. A typical American gun owner here embodies every race, every ethnic background, and every occupational background. Yep, same here. The typical American gun owner is your everyday engineer, your nurse, your doctor, your managers, your fast food workers, your restaurant workers, and your office workers. The last thing you need to know about the American gun owner we're not hostile towards immigrants. We're not hostile towards other cultures. Yeah, but you have also no idea of other regions in the world, it seems. I mean, in Austria, you can go into a gun store if you're 18 or above and have no police weapon ban on you, buy a hunting rifle or shotgun or whatever, wait three days and take it with you, Dan. As far as I know, there are regions in America where it is way harder to get a gun then over here, I mean, yeah, of course, we have silly rules, no question about that. Like the prohibition of you can't do a flashlight on a shotgun because then it's a weapon of war and not allowed. That's silly, but I mean, America has also stupid laws like you can't shoot a gun while having sex or something like that. 
And another thing to know is that the shooting sports are fun. <laughs> yeah, if you know where the safety switch is. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Sorry, go on, man. Do you, my good man. I wanted to address really quick the real purpose behind our Second Amendment here in America. And the real purpose behind our Second Amendment actually has nothing to do with hunting or the shooting sports. The real purpose behind our Second Amendment in this country is to preserve our freedom and liberty from enemies both foreign and domestic. And the Second Amendment and its history goes back to the time where a bunch of Minutemen could fight an army from without or within. Your guns are worthless scrap against tanks, against planes, against artillery. Sorry to tell you that, but if Sarah Palin come to power, comes to power, crowns herself as the Queen of America and has the backing of the army for some reason, you can do scrap about that. You don't have a tyranny and you can do nothing against that. Our founders recognized the need to have the Second Amendment to protect us not just from foreign enemies, but domestic enemies as well. However, look, it's not a message to us, isn't it? It's a message to your own people, and it's whining about losing your rights to remain a bit Wild Westy. I understand that, okay? I, I really understand that. But don't play concerned if you don't take the time to understand at least the basics of our relations, of the European relations, to our guns. <laughs>